to share on the blood covenant and the importance of having a blood covenant with the Lord. And today I like to pray uh, at the end of this, uh, the message. I like to, to pray for healing because I believe the Lord heals and we're seeing so many miracles and I believe the Lord wants to do miracles here. So if you need healing, today you came to the right place. Amen. Now, uh, according to, to uh, the Bible, we have a blood covenant with God. So He established the blood covenant. But all the old cultures of the world uh, have this uh, uh, in their culture, a blood covenant. And uh, especially military uh, treaties in the past were sealed with blood. We know that now it's just with a pen, or uh, I don't know if it's just with a stamp, I don't know how they do it now, but usually they just sign it. But in, in, uh, in, uh, in the old days, in the time of the Old Testament, all the covenants, all the alliances were sealed with blood. So they will uh, shed blood from the leaders, usually into a cup. And because, uh, you know, they're not going just to drink that blood, they mix it with wine. So, so usually they, they will pour a little bit of blood, they will cut an incision to a cup with wine, uh, both parties, and then they both will drink of the cup. Uh, well, I don't know if you've read uh, in the Bible, but at least you came to church, and you know that when we take communion, we take the cup, which is a symbol of the blood of Jesus. And this is where it's rooted from. It's rooted from these old military covenants. Now, I like to read a, a scripture, in a, uh, and uh, you can go ahead and move ahead. And I like to mention that um, uh, in, the, in, the old prof, uh, in the Old Testament, kings, prophets, and priests uh, would, uh, uh, would have uh, blood covenants, would have covenants with the Lord also. And uh, we need to know in Galatians chapter 3, in verse 26, I'm going to read this verse. It says, for in Christ Jesus... Uh, can you put the verse? Go ahead, one more. <laughs> Here we go. Galatians chapter 3, 26. For in Christ Jesus, you are all, all sons of God through faith. For as many of, of you as we were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is no male and female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And you are Christ's. Then you are Abraham's offspring heirs according to promise so number one that we see here first thing we see is that in christ we are sons of god i know how many of you heard that we are all god's children that's not true uh, we are god's children in christ so we, we receive that right of adoption and uh, the second thing we see here is that we need to be baptized in order to be part of, of this same covenant. Uh, and uh, number three, it says that we are in a covenant with God just like Abraham. So Abraham had the covenant established with God himself. And God told him how he should prepare the covenant. He told uh, him to cut some animals in half. And, and, and the presence of God passed through the middle of those animals, of that, all that, that blood. And it seems... You know, a, a bit awful when we think about it like a slaughter. But God wanted really to establish uh, that the covenant with Abraham was secret. And it was sealed uh, with blood of animals. Now, the Bible says that in Christ, we are heirs just like Abraham. So we have the same kind of covenant with the Lord. Now, thank God we don't need to shed blood. But we need to understand the importance of the blood. So, why blood? You know, blood is a very important sub substance. And uh, uh, there's uh, mysteries about the blood. And just recently, science starts to, to find uh, uh, the importance of blood, that we need the blood cells to take oxygen to different parts of our body. Without blood, we'll be dead. Of course, we know this. Uh, but there's a substance called uh, hemoglobin, uh, which is found in, the, in these uh, blood cells and takes the oxygen to our brain. That's why we're thinking now, without blood, we will be dead. And uh, uh, also, uh, a brain without uh, oxygen, it's like a car with no fuel. We won't go anywhere. So when people have a, 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 a problem of lack of circulation in the brain, uh, we know, unfortunately, what happens. 
uh, when, uh, when a stroke hits, when someone is paralyzed or they lose their memory because of lack of blood in the brain just for a, a few seconds. A few seconds are enough just to knock us off and we can lose our memories. We don't want that to happen, do we? So it's very important that we have blood and healthy blood in our bodies. Uh, also, we can see that uh, God gave specific uh, laws about blood and in Leviticus, Chapter 17 and verse 10, I'm going to read this uh, scripture, uh, verses 10 to 12. <clears throat> the Lord gave specific laws about the blood. And if someone didn't respect the laws, they should be cast out of fellowship. So we read in Leviticus 17.10. If uh, anyone of the house of Israel uh, or the strangers whom sojourn among them eats any blood, I will set my face against that person who eats blood and uh, will cut him off from among his people. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it for you on the altar to make atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that makes atonement for life. Therefore I have said to the people of Israel, No person among you shall eat blood, neither shall any stranger who sojourns among you eat blood. So here we see, you can go to the next slide, that Moses wrote, for the life of the flesh is in the blood. So the, the, our life is in the blood. Uh, some translations even say the soul of the flesh is in the blood. And uh, it's, it's uh, arguable how to translate this. But um, because uh, the red blood cells carry oxygen, life is possible. And science today, they say that each blood cell, one cell carries 270 million molecules of hemoglobin. So science, science are just, they're just amazed with, the, with the, the amount of life in one cell. One single cell has 270 million molecules. And uh, uh, Moses knew the secret of life 3,500 years before medicine arrived to this conclusion, that blood is the liquid of life. Of course, people knew that without blood, we have no life. But people couldn't understand in the, in the days of the Old Testament about, uh, about blood. Now, let me go to a, to a next uh, uh, point of this message. And let me talk to you about bad blood. Bad blood. Well, bad blood, it's an English expression that we use a phrase referring to enmity between uh, two or more people. We say there's bad blood among them. There's blood, bad blood you know, uh, in this relationship. And this is a reference uh, for the breaking of military covenants. There was bad blood. It's like that blood has no value. But let me talk about medicine. And I don't know if, I don't know if you ever heard about leeches or if you were treated with leeches. Anyone here treated with leeches? Treated. No? Uh, okay. <laughs> I know my grandparents were treated with leeches because uh, about 4,000 4, years ago, people started to uh, find uh, in nature ways of healing. And they realized that there were these animals in water. You can uh, go to the next one and um, go another one. And for 4,000 years, Greeks, Romans treated uh, all sorts of diseases with leeches. And you know, when, uh, when they, they finished or they ended this treatment, was in the 20th century. So during World War I, there were still people using leeches for healing. And guess what? Now they're starting to use them again. Because they abandoned leeches, and now they're using again in hospitals. So, so in, uh, if you go to a hospital, certain kinds of surgery require blood to be uh, uh, cleansed when the surgeons are doing the surgery, and they will apply a leech. And there's 650 different kinds of leeches. Let, let's see one. Let's see uh, one in water. And now let's see a real one used in medicine. You can go to the next one. I don't know if you would like to have this applied to your back. <laughs> I, I actually had the movie, but it was so disgusting that I thought, now I'm not going to, to show you that. I found a movie on YouTube with 20 million views. It's a lady with a, with a bunch, maybe uh, 20 of those on her back, and they're just, uh, you know, s these are blood suckers. And they, they just extract the blood, and, uh, and this wasn't that, uh, that long ago that, that was in use. 
Why? Because uh, people knew that certain diseases will be healed if bad blood or uh, diseased blood will be extracted, giving the opportunity to the body to regenerate. Now, why am I mentioning uh, this? Well, because, you know, this was a very common form of a, tr a treatment. I believe Luke used it all the time. Because in the time of, of uh, when the gospel was written, Luke was a doctor. This was one of the main tools of the doctor, the leeches. <laughs> and and uh, uh, still, in, also in, our, in the beginning of the century, they will use also for healing, uh, uh, kind of like a, a yogurt cup in, uh, in glass, and they will throw a, a, a little bit of, uh, of cotton uh, with the alcohol on fire, and they, they, will, they will put this on the back to suck uh, you know, the blood and to try to extract the disease. Now, we all have a disease, and this disease is called sin. And when we sing, what can wash away my sin, nothing but the blood of Jesus, of course, this is a, a spiritual thing that happens. But God is talking about something that was known for, for ages. He's, uh, there's a reference to military tre treaties, and there's a reference also of healing. Because they knew that in order to be healed, blood had to be extracted. So they will receive new life with the new blood that will be regenerated in their bodies. Let me tell you that in the spirit, we all need the blood of Jesus. We all need, once in a while, some spiritual leeches to come and just to extract the bad things of our life and allow a new life to come into us yes. and regeneration in Christ. Yes. Now, let me talk about uh, a little bit further about blood and water. Well, we know leeches live in water. They're water animals. Uh, I had leeches attached to me by accident. As I was uh, bathing in a, in a river, I, I had leeches, and it's pretty disgusting, they were small, but you cannot feel them. They live in the water, these animals live in water. Now, in the Abrahamic uh, covenant, it was a blood covenant, God made this covenant with Abraham and nobody else. So it was Abraham and nobody else. Now, the covenant extended to his descendants, and uh, others entered in the covenant, through a ritual, and we, we can go to the next one, and the, the ritual was, was called circumcision. So, through circumcision, uh, uh, the Jews were able to enter into this covenant, this holy covenant with God. They had to be circumcised. And uh, God did not cut the personal blood covenant with every Hebrew male, but He provided a way of, en of entry into this blood covenant. And uh, this was the right of circumcision. So every male had to be circumcised in order to be in covenant with God. This was really, really important to God's people, to the Jews. And Jews today continue to have this ritual. And um, uh, now in, in Romans chapter uh, 2 and verse 29, he says, But he is a Jew which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not of man, but of God. So the Bible in the New Testament had to address this issue because the first Christians were Jewish. Most of the first Christians were Jewish. Then some Romans converted, then some Greeks, and then all Gentiles and Jews entered into a covenant with God. But it's very important to know that without blood, without the shedding of blood, there is no covenant. There is no covenant. So here, uh, Paul is explaining uh, that we are Jews, or we are the people of the covenant, we are God's people, not when we are circumcised on the outside, but he uh, says that we need to be circumcised in our heart. So our heart has to somehow shed blood, and we know our heart is pumping blood, but in the spirit we need to enter into this covenant with God. It's very sacred. It's very important. Now let's go to the next slide. The new blood covenant, uh, the, or the new uh, testament, the, the new covenant, is based on the relationship with, between God the Father and Jesus. And the Son of Man was already under the, the Abrahamic co covenant because Jesus was circumcised. We read in the, in the New Testament that Mary 
took him to the temple to be circumcised. And she offered, at the same time, atonement for her own sin. Well, too bad for the doctrine that Mary had no sin, because she offered two doves, according to the law. So the New Testament describes this uh, very accurately. Now, after his death on the cross, the Roman soldiers had to remove Jesus from, uh, that, from, from, from that, uh, that pole where he was hanging. So, uh, and this was very important because there was a feast, there was a festivity for the Jews, and they shouldn't have dead bodies hanging around during the feast. So, after Jesus died, he shed his blood, the, the soldiers came uh, to, the, to, the, to the people that were, were there, there was just Jesus, at least him and two more, maybe more, we really don't know, but uh, at least three people were crucified, and so they, they were breaking their legs. But it says when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs, but one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and once there came out blood and water. So here's uh, Jesus being pierced, and there's come out blood and water. Now, uh, scientists try to explain why water, and I heard and I read different uh, theories that there was uh, a stress during the time that he was tortured, that there was water in the lungs, and I heard all these things. I really <clears throat> don't want to know why water came, but it came. And there's a purpose, and there's a reason. Why blood and water? Because his part of the covenant was shedding his blood. Our part of the covenant is to be baptized in Christ. You see, it's very important to understand that our covenant, our circumcision comes from the heart. But on the outside, Jesus said, whoever believes and is baptized shall be saved. Why the baptism? Because that water where we are uh, uh, baptized, it's a symbol of our death and resurrection, is our part of the covenant. But Jesus, while he was at the cross, prophetically, he had to manifest the grace of God and show that it's by blood and water that we enter into that covenant. We don't need to cut our bodies, we don't need to be circumcised, but we need to be baptized. And I'm not talking about baptism when we were babies, some of us that were born Roman Catholics. I was born in a Roman Catholic family, so I was less than a year old and I was baptized. I've seen the pictures. So when I accepted the Lord as my Savior, uh, I came from a life of sin. When I accepted the Lord, I was really far away from God. I was uh, uh, trafficking drugs and living a life of crime. I was really away from, from the Lord. But by His mercy, He saved me. He delivered me. After seven years of addiction with heroin, I, I was completely finished and the Lord healed me. He transformed me. And I, I realized I had to do a covenant with the Lord. It wasn't enough just to say, Lord, I love you. I had to be baptized. And I couldn't understand. So at the church, somebody told me about the blood covenant. It's what I'm sharing today. It's what I'm sharing. He did the hard part. I wouldn't like to be crucified, would you? I wouldn't like to suffer for sins that I didn't commit. But Jesus suffered for me, on my behalf, on your behalf. He paid the price with blood. You just have to pay it with water. Isn't that easy? So uh, Mark 16, 15 uh, says, Jesus said to them, Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. So baptism is very, very important. Why? Because it's our part of the blood covenant. Blood and water. Now, baptism is just a simple act that we do in the natural world with tremendous implications in the spiritual world. Because when we are baptized, we are telling everyone, we're telling the whole, the whole world, I'm being baptized. You know, uh, I, I praise the Lord because our church continues to grow and we have uh, lots of new people always coming. Last week, uh, myself, my wife, we stayed uh, talking with, a, with a, a sister that brought a friend. And, uh, and because they attended to a, a, a different church, 
uh, we had communion and they told her, no, you cannot uh, take communion because you're not baptized. And I don't know how you do here, but some churches only give communion to people that are baptized. In our church, we, we give communion uh, uh, to the believers. Uh, if they're not baptized, we tell them, okay, be baptized on the next baptism, but go ahead, take communion, because it's the table of the Lord. So I don't want to enter into doctrine, I don't want to, to tell you, uh, but certain churches do differently. But when she told this lady, you know, you need to be baptized, she said, and where is the baptism? And the lady said, I think they have a, a you know, a, a kind of a pool, and we have a, a, a baptismal tank in the platform. So they have a pool, she told her, over there. And when she heard this, she said, in, in front of everybody, no. I don't want to be baptized in front of everybody. So everybody will see me being baptized. Yes, that's the point. That's the point. You're just witnessing to everybody that now you have new life in Christ. And the way you witness this, it's with water. Jesus did it with blood. Thank God because he was merciful. Let me go to the conclusion. You know, when we reject God, there is bad blood between God and us. Bad blood. So it, it, this, it's like God shedding his precious blood, but mankind is rejecting the covenant. When a Christian that confesses Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, abandons the Lord, does what we call backslide or, uh, you know, we, there's many ways of describing this. It's like telling God, you know, your sacrifice has no value. And I don't know if you abandon God or if you try to live your life in a different way. I don't know, but God knows you. And today you're here because God really wants you to listen to this message. God gave His Son to die for you. He shed His blood. And He expects us to be reconciled with Him. To, to have a circumcised heart and true faith. And it's the faith that is mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and everything itself against the knowledge of God that puts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. It's that, this kind of faith that we, we need to have. The faith that tells us that all things are possible through Christ Jesus. You see, when we accept this blood covenant, God does miracles. And this faith has the assurance that Christ is truly Savior and Lord and is enabled to bear witness with these words, I know that my Redeemer lives. And I am cruci <clears throat> excuse me, crucified with Christ. <clears throat> Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which now I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So I am crucified with Christ. What does this mean? It means simply that he paid the price, he shed the blood, I just had to follow him, accept his love, be baptized, but now my spiritual position is I am dead in Christ. And when I am dead in Christ, you know what I've learned about dead people, because I was I was born really close to a cemetery, a huge cemetery. I've never seen one that big here in Canada. And it's where I, I learned how to ride my bike in the cemetery. So I was used to, you know, to go all those roads in the cemetery. And, uh, and, uh, and I, I know something about dead people. And one of the things I know is that dead people do not complain. Thank you. Have you ever heard a, a dead person complaining? Oh, you put too much makeup in me. <laughs> I've never seen a dead person complaining. A dead person is dead. There's no desire. There's, there's nothing else to say. Now, are we truly dead in Christ? As Christians, we need to accept this life of God and just accept that we are crucified. And the life we live now, it's, it, we live in the, in, the, in, in, the, in the faith of Jesus Christ. You can go one more. And I want to challenge you today to end the bad blood between you and Jesus. Because, you know, 
those leeches that live in water, they try to find a hot body to, to just suck their blood. It's a very interesting animal. Uh, I don't like a leech as a, as, a, as a pet. I guess you don't want it to. But it's a very, very interesting animal that can save a life. You see, now we find it repulsive. We say, ooh, we look at those animals and say, ugh, that's repulsive. But you see, in, in the one century ago, just a hundred years ago, and for millennia, since the time of Abraham, they used these animals. And they were a symbol of life. They were a symbol of life. Because so many people were being healed. There was no penicillin. So if there was an infection, it was the only way to extract the infection. It was through the water. So when in the Old Covenant, baptism was mentioned, you see, when they went to meet John the Baptist at the Jordan, guess what they had in the water? They had them there. There were leeches over there. It's, it's a common animal in those places. So as they were baptizing, I guess they will come out of the water. Oh, here's one. And they wouldn't care that it was not that repulsive. Now, in the spirit, brothers, sisters, we need to have a cleansing that only happens through the blood of Jesus. We need to end the bad blood between us and God. Certain times, Christians don't even realize. But let me tell you, if your life is not a life of blessing. Let me ask you. What can wash away your sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Were you singing this? What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And uh, I, I like also that other song. Are you washed in the blood? You know that one? Yeah. So we sing the songs. But are we really washed in the blood? How's the blood between you and the Lord? And many times we take it for granted as Christians. We take it for granted. We say, oh, I came to the Lord 30 or 40 years ago. That's it. Now I'm saved. I come to church every week. But is there really good blood between you and the Lord? And we know that there's a, a symptom in our life. And one of the symptoms that happens in the life of, of Christians is that it seems that there's no blessing. There's no joy. There's too many burdens. And when we're at this point, it's time to come to the Lord and say, wash me, Lord. I want to start all over again. Come and heal me. Now, I'm going to ask if you could stand with me. And uh, we had just a wonderful time of worship. And I just love to worship the Lord. But I, I like to give opportunity to the Holy Spirit to do something special in your life. And for many of you, this is not a new message. This is a really old message. Well, it's just what I, I know how to preach. It's just the blood of Jesus and the cross and the power of the blood of Jesus. But when we're present in the house of God and we pray and we trust in the Lord, we can trust in Him for our healing. And today, I promise, I'm not going to apply leeches. <laughs> I promise, I didn't brought any with me. But in the spirit, I truly believe that God wants to bring healing to your sick body. There's no illness that is too hard for Him to heal. I've seen people healed of AIDS, healed of cancer, healed of tumors. Uh, you know, people leaving their, their crouches and walking, leaving their wheelchairs. And today, God is here to touch you in a very simple way. So I'd like to invite all of you that need prayer.